Well, let's kick off with um, a game by Gary Kasparov in, um, uh, in what's really uh, the main line of the, uh, the Tarash, in, in my view. And uh, it's against Beliavsky in the, in the match he played uh, in, against him in 1983, during Kasparov's run-up to the, to the World Championship. So we have everything as in the Petrosian Spassky game thus far. C takes d4, knight takes d4, h6, bishop e3. And now Kasparov played the move rook e8, which is a, uh, a bit more flexible than, uh, uh, than bishop g4. Uh, this is what uh, Spassky played against Petrosian. So Kasparov's playing rook e8 instead. So Sometimes then uh, the the bishop can come to d7. Uh, uh, for example, now after white plays queen a4, then black can play his bishop to to d7 and uh, put pressure on the uh, uh, on the queen. Um, we'll be looking at uh, alternatives to, to to queen a4 a little bit later. So after bishop d7, uh, white plays rook a d1. So he's uh, trying to build up on the uh, on the d file. Black now replies with the move knight b4, hitting the queen and simultaneously um, supporting this, uh, this pawn on d5. And uh, the knight's active on b4 as well. OK, well, white uh, doesn't have too much choice in this matter. He, uh, he needs to play the queen back to b3. And uh, now black plays the move a5. So uh, here he's got the idea of, of going a4 and, um, and harassing the, the queen further. Well, in this game, uh, Beliavsky decides that he's going to make room for the, the queen on, on d1 and, and start doubling on the d file. He plays rook d2, so he can drop the queen back to d1 and, uh, and hopefully use these, these double major pieces to, to, to press on the d-file against the, uh, the pawn on d5. Um, later on, they, they decided it was, it was actually better to prevent black's next move by playing a4 with white. But uh, there too, black can get counterplay, as we're, as we're going to see. So, after a5, rook d2, black played a4, hitting the queen. Queen goes back to, to d1, and now black played a3. First of all, stopping white from playing a3, um, which would uh, uh, kick the knight back and uh, drive it from the, the support of d5. And secondly, targeting this pawn on a2. After, I mean, after b takes a3, rook takes a3, the, the a2 pawn's weak. I mean, this knight's getting hit as well. So, um, white plays now the move queen b1. Um, possibly he should have played his queen to b3 here. He, perhaps he should have played it back. Uh, after which black would play queen a5, another active move. And then um, <clears throat> b takes a3, queen takes a3. Uh, white can take on d5 here, but um, uh, black would get um, good compensation for the pawn. He, he would take here, bishop takes, knight takes, queen takes, and then play bishop h3. And uh, black's got tremendously active pieces here for the, uh, for the pawn. I mean, after, uh, say, a rook to d1, let's say, then black could consider playing bishop to b4, Hitting this uh, this rook on on d2, uh, his other rook may come here in a minute. Uh, very very active play. Uh, rook takes e3 is in the air. Um, excellent compensation for the pawn. So um, okay, back to the game. After a3, Belyavsky played queen b1, and uh, now uh, Kasparov played bishop f8. He could also have considered putting the bishop on on this more active square on c5. This would also have been interesting. And uh, then if, if white had played uh, the move knight e6, which uh, at first sight looks good because uh, you're threatening the queen and want to take this bishop off, then black can actually sacrifice the queen with b3. 
bishop takes e3, knight takes d8, bishop takes d2, and, uh, and get very good compensation. Um, knight takes b7, then d4, and uh, uh, black pieces are, are just flooding in. You know, this knight's attacked, and uh, this, this pawn is under pressure. Um, uh, tremendous compensation. So, bishop c5 is interesting. Uh, Kasparov played his bishop to f8. Uh, white now took on a3. Rook takes. So, the, the knight on c3 is under pressure. And uh, white played here queen b2 to, to protect his knight. And black replied with a, another good move, queen a8. Uh, protecting the rook and also adding to the pressure on this uh, this a2 pawn. Okay, well white played now knight b3 and black went bishop c6. So now the, the d5 pawn is, is well protected. And uh, next move we see, well white plays bishop d4. Um, I... He has to be careful here already that uh, that black doesn't sacrifice the exchange. You know, I mean, this is uh, this is really in the air now, uh, and could be very dangerous for for white. You know, because uh, uh, the the, the follow-up may be uh, queen a7 to hit e3 or or knight g4 perhaps. Um, so white plays bishop d4, um, staying in front of the uh, the pawn. Um, and black now takes advantage of the uh, the e4 square, which the isolated d-pawn uh, uh, gives him. He plays a move knight e4. Um, well, I think black's position is is already preferable here. I mean, he's um, white takes on e4 now, and black takes with a pawn. So there's there's no more problems with uh, an isolated pawn because it's gone, and um, black uh, just has active piece play and. A strong cramping pawn on e4, which uh, uh, shuts the bishop on g2 out of play. Well, white now played rook a1. Um, probably not the best, and maybe he should have played the move knight c5 here. Um, after that, if, if black plays knight takes a2, white has got rook a1, and he's uh, getting some, uh, some counterplay. Uh, instead of knight takes a2, uh, black should perhaps play the move e3. Interesting move. Uh, when bishop takes e3 allows bishop takes g2, king takes g2, b6. Discovered check, simultaneously attacking a knight, so uh, winning a piece. Um, after e3, then white's best is probably bishop takes c6 and then uh, e takes f2 check followed by uh, knight takes c6 would just be nice for black because uh, white's king side is is broken up but um, you know white may be able to hold that position anyway um, back to the game uh, d takes e4 rook a1 was played and now uh, black played bishop d5 so more pressure against a2 White played queen b1, and black played the move b6. So now the, uh, the, there's an idea to play e3. White plays e3, and the knight comes into d3. Rook back to d1, and now black plays b5. So the, uh, yeah, the b pawn is is adding to the uh, uh, the pressure black's building on the queen side. Um, it goes to b4 next move, bishop f1, now b4. And, uh, well, white decides he, he needs to eliminate this knight on d3, even though doing so leaves his light squares around his king very weak. Uh, I mean, he, he takes this like this, and then rook takes a2, rook takes a2, queen takes a2. Leaves black clearly better because uh, he's got um, an outside pass pawn and uh, all these squares are a weak round white's king now. Um, probably the best chance for white. Um, now he plays the move knight c5 and black goes bishop f3. Bishop's immensely strong here and 
after rook a1, black goes queen back to d5. So this queen's trying to, to come over and get into to h3 and give queen g2 mate. Queen b3, queen h5, knight d3. So white's hanging on, but uh, only by the, the skin of his teeth here. Uh, he wants to meet queen h3 with knight f4, attacking the queen and, uh, and covering the, the threat of mate. So after knight d3, black went bishop d6, um, stopping knight f4, knight e1, hitting the bishop on f3, and this just dropped back to b7. So all the advantages of, of black's position remain. Uh, to add to white's problems, he was in uh, serious time trouble here, and uh, in fact, he, d he didn't manage to to make the moves. I mean, he, he played queen b1 and, and his flag fell. Um, in any case, this position is, is very good for black. I mean, he, he could place, for example, bishop e4, and after queen here, go h5. And uh, it's really horrible for white, because uh, uh, this pawn on its own would be uh, uh, painful, but with his king weak as well, and black playing h4 and, and everything, then I think that you know it, it'd be extremely difficult to uh, to hold this position, uh, not least against uh, Kasparov. So um, yeah, an excellent game by Kasparov, and 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 throughout this game we we saw how the activity of black's pieces uh, stopped white from uh, uh, being able to. Uh, uh, ganged up on the d pawn effectively. Black was always doing something active and, uh, and, and suddenly white had to start making concessions and uh, he, he ended up uh, capturing on e4 after which the, the d pawn came to e4 and uh, black's pressure continued until, uh, uh, until the, the, the white flag fell.